Hello, this is Stephanie from Single Mother Testimony, and thank you for coming back to my channel. And if you are new, I am a single mother who strictly talks about her testimony and also give you what I have learned from it strictly from the word. Okay, so please subscribe just so you can get new updates. And if you know any other single mother who is going through what I am going through or, you know, need that encouragement, please send her my channel so she can stay encouraged. And as you also notice, I am doing a podcast kind of style because for me as a mother, I really don't have time to really look at the screen, but um, I really hope that um, that the podcast style helps you to still continue to clean, still continue to take care of your kids and listen to what God have um, for you and for me as well. <laughs> so let me get this started here. So my testimony... Um, I'm going to call this message, I am a tree of life. So I remember I was a caretaker and this was before I was pregnant, but this does tie into who I am right now as a mother. But I remember taking care of a 70 year old elderly woman and I'm just gonna call her Betty just for the sake of her privacy. But she was youthful. She had the spunk. She had the attitude. And even though she had wrinkles, her youth still just shined through. But Betty, she also had a good night routine. So she took her time brushing her hair. She then would brush her teeth and then wash her face and make sure that the sink wasn't wet with water. So she'll get that paper towel, y'all, and start wiping around the counter and just make sure that her face was beautiful and ready for bed. And <laughs> I love Betty, but I was like, okay, like I would just try to talk to her just so I can be calm. But in my head, I was like, hurry up. You are taking forever. Like, oh my goodness. But it was quite interesting because she would be humming and just enjoying this night routine. And then when she walked back to bed, y'all, Betty was not a fast walker. She would take her time and then she would kind of make the bed, but then unmake the bed so she can, you know, almost present herself to her bed, lay down. And then right before going to sleep, she'll pat my hand and say, thank you. And I would look at her and I would just laugh because I'm like, this was the same routine every night. But then as I was looking at her, I started to realize that I was rushing in my life to get nowhere. So as Betty was taking her time. She was getting so much done, but I was rushing, standing there doing nothing. But it also tied into my life and how I was moving fast paced. Because when I was working before I had my child, I was on the grind, 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 but I was getting nowhere. It was very interesting. So I'm going to read Proverbs 14, 29, and this is from the Amplified Version. So it says, he who is slow to anger has a great understanding and profits from his self-control. So when I looked at Betty and Betty reminded me, I wanna be like that when I get old. I wanna be a mom or an older woman who can just have this night routine, hum herself all the way back to her bed and just be ready for the next day. That's who I want to be. So I long to be that wise woman in my youthful days. And I know I'm in my 30s, but 30s is still youthful. <laughs> but how I started was God started telling me to write in cursive. And I know nowadays, not a lot of kids know how to write in cursive, but God told me to start writing in cursive. I took that time dancing on my paper in cursive and handwriting, and I found the beauty of listening to what I was writing in my head and also taking my time to listen to what the Holy Spirit was saying as well. So once I became a mother, 
I started telling myself, okay, I need a morning routine. Betty, she went to bed so happy and just woke up ready for the morning. I want to have a morning routine so I can be ready for my day. So I would wake up before my son and I would wake up around 5.30. So I would wake up at that time, pour a good cup of coffee, take my time with it, get all of his stuff ready for daycare. And then I would also put on a um, good YouTube channel, a Christian based YouTube channel. And I have a few of them that I love to listen to in the morning, <laughs> but those YouTube channels are encouragement or even Bible verses, morning prayer. I normally have a schedule of what I listen to each day. Um, but I'm saying this because I started to see the profit of being a mother at home with my son with a morning routine. So I consider myself as a homemaker because I do work at home. I have a remote position. God blessed me with that when um, bef while I was pregnant, which is amazing. Like a month before giving birth, God gave me this remote job. But I consider myself as a homemaker because I had to remind myself it starts at the home first and then I can pour out to my job. Then I can pour out to my church. Not in that exact order, but I can pour out in other places. So the book of Proverbs influenced me to be a wise Proverbs woman that God wanted me to be. And I stumbled upon another verse, which was 318. It says, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy is everyone who holds her tightly. So I did a little research on trees because I'm like, okay, I feel like we see, we look at trees, we don't value the importance of a tree and what they do before growing. You know, we always see trees, but we don't understand the process. So just to kind of give you a little bit, trees, when they are in a seed, before they bloom, I don't know if that's the proper word for it, before they grow, they find the right atmosphere to grow upon before growing. So um, during that time, they are protected by that hard shell until they are able to come out. So I just want to tell you, sisters, it's important to know if you are on good soil, okay? Your prayer life, your community, your personal surroundings, are you protected during the vulnerable season of finding fresh soil? It takes time to mature and bear the fruit. And once you gain that strength, you can push through the soil and defeat the stress, defeat the anger, defeat the doubt, anxiety, and self-pity. So I am saying this because you, you need to get a foundation that you can set yourself in. Some of us wake up in the morning, we're rushing, we're trying to get the kids to school, we're trying to get the kids to daycare, we don't have our coffee, our coffee's cold, everything is just a hot mess. But if you are a seed rolling around like the wind, you are not going to be able to find a foundation where you can grow in. So if you set that routine for yourself in the morning, you'll be able to grow into your, um, I want to say motherhood, but creating that root in the ground. So your home is not disturbed if something unexpected come up because you have a routine for yourself. So it's just like a seed. If it keeps blowing in the wind, it's not going to grow while it's blowing in the wind. No, a tree, it finds that good soil and then it breaks out of that shell, digs that root in the ground, starts growing its roots, and then it starts coming up as a tree. So God was showing me that the beginning stages, I had to do some research, y'all, so I'm getting a little nerdy, so bear with me, keep up with me, okay? But in the beginning stages of a tree, it is exposed and is at risk for high attacks. And the tree is very flexible and it's soft. But once it is grown, that is when it will start to produce the fruit. So a tree with a shorter lifespan will produce fruit sooner than a tree expected to live longer. So let me tell you this, a tree with a shorter lifespan produced the fruit sooner. I don't know about you, but I want to be a tree that produce, that grows first and then produce the fruit. So what kind of tree are you? 
What kind of tree are you? Are you allowing God to bend and soften your life so that you can grow and form naturally to look up at him? I want to read another verse for you. Isaiah 46, 4. Even to your old age, I am he. And even to your advanced old age, I will carry you. I have made you and I will carry you. Be assured, I will carry you and I will save you. I even look back to this day about Betty and just wonder if she knew that God would be there to say good morning to her. I always think like, you know what? She probably had that routine and humming and getting excited because every morning was a fresh start for her. And sis, I wonder, and I'm gonna ask you, and I'm also asking myself, (laughs) do you believe that God will take care of you? Do you believe that God will take care of you and your child? Do you believe he will carry and save you in your life? If not, I need you to become that tree that is soft and flexible enough to watch God save you from spiritual death. You don't need to go on believing that you can't make it as a mom. Continue to stay in your role as a mom. Because like that scripture says, and I'm going to go back to that scripture. Oh, dear Lord, let me try to find it. Proverbs 3.18. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy is everyone who holds her tightly. Let your child hold you tightly because you are firm enough. You are rooted enough in your home. You are rooted enough in your prayer, your life. You're rooted enough in your word, enough to believe and trust in God that he will take care of you. I want to end with this verse because it speaks to my heart. And this is going to be a scripture that I am going to be waking up every morning to. It's Luke chapter 12, 22 through 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. I'm going to read Luke chapter 12, 31 through 32 as well. It says, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid like flocks for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sister, God is bringing heaven down on earth. You don't have to worry about a thing. Continue to trust in him. And continue to trust in the Holy Spirit. Whatever he says, do it. I don't even care if he's telling you, put on this outfit. If the Holy Spirit says, put it on, put it on. If he says to eat this today, eat that today. If if the Holy Spirit is telling you to take a different route to work, take a different route. Listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is trying to guide you. And I just want to say, you are never alone. Even on those nights you feel like you're alone and no one is there to understand you, you are not alone. And that is beautiful. And I'm not saying you're not alone because your child is always around you. Your child, yes, it's a beautiful thing. You'll never be alone because of that. But I want to let you know the situation you are in, you are never alone because God is by your side. I'm going to close this out with a prayer. So bow your head and close your eyes. God, allow me and my sisters to be a tree of life. A woman who is rooted firmly. Where our roots are so deep in the earth core. Let me not be persuaded by the direction of the wind. When I wake up on a rainy day, Or my sisters, whenever we wake up on a rainy day, let it be refreshing to us. Let us be guided by the sunlight. Wherever God goes, God, we will be there following. 
Amen. Thank you for listening to my lesson. I am a tree of life. I am so excited that I am just following God's walk and and obeying what he wants me to do. So if this touched your heart, please share, like, um, and share with other moms because I really want to build a community that will help single mothers to stay encouraged. And also, you know, comment below about something you have learned um, so far within your journey. Um, So comment in the below and you probably hear my son in the background, but (laughs) I hope you all enjoy your day and I will see you next week. Bye.